the Mild Manor Movie Review with your host, Tim. And Tony. On this week's episode, we will be talking about Bloodsport. Along with special guest, Mike Colby. Okay, we would like to introduce uh, resident John Claude Van Dam expert um, Michael Kobe um, onto the podcast this week. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, me and uh, Mike went to college together at Ferris State, uh, both uh, brothers of Pi Kappa Alpha. Um, I actually, I'm pretty sure I met the first Pikes at your place on 303 or at 303. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure I met everybody. In yeah, I'm pretty sure I met everyone there. That was like I one of the first pretty, ones. I'm pretty sure all friendships at Fair State <laughs> start at my house and they just blossom from there. Um, yep. Uh, I have many tickets to prove it. I think one of them still framed at the house somewhere. But uh, yeah, I, I, I paid the price to be your guys' friends for yep. quite a bit of years. So. Yes. Uh, so we'll we'll start uh, like we did the last uh, guest, and we'll uh, shoot you some questions just so people yeah. can get to know you a little bit. Rapid fire, send it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll start with the first one. Uh, why bloodsport? Why bloodsport? Why not bloodsport? <laughs> the, uh, correct, correct terminology, the correct, folks. Correct. No. Answer. Um. You know, when I was a little kid, I actually started watching Jean Claude Van Damme. Actually, like way earlier than I ever should have, probably. Um. I, I think I actually. My buddy Randy and I, who uh, read, you know, is Bear, Bear uh, yeah. I think we stole Bloodsport from either his stepdad or somebody, and we stayed up really late one night <laughs> watching, and I, I'll never forget that, but it was just one of those movies that kind of sucked me in and really started the whole Jean-Claude Van Damme uh, expertise, if you will, so um, yeah, I guess the real question is just why not Bloodsport? Uh, it's an acceptable answer, too. <laughs> Um, okay, so moving on, what's your uh, favorite non jean claude Van Damme fighting movie? <laughs> so I actually just said this to yeah. Rez earlier, but uh, one of the very the first jobs uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme ever got was basically just like standing in a crowd of people breakdancing in a movie called Break, I believe, <laughs> or Breaking or Break. I, I think it's like 1981 or something about like street dancing, but <laughs> he's basically just like sitting around clapping in like a wrestling leotard and just kind of... <laughs> just kind of grinding moving his hips and stuff and uh i it really wasn't until i was like the internet got big when we were younger that i found that video and i just <laughs> i died laughing and like if i ever get like really sad or stressed i just close my eyes and go to the happy place of jean claude van damme doing that dance that's your happy everything, Gilmore happy place yeah. yeah everything's better after that like you know nothing can hurt you after that so you'd have to see it to really uh take it for what it's worth that's fair enough um, also, this question kind of comes from Justin uh, yeah. from our last week's episode. Uh, Justin, and I guess I too kind of mix it up, but uh, can you do the kickboxer dance? Oh, can I? <laughs> well, okay. So, <laughs> if let so I'm like I'm like old man dad now. Like I'm only 31, but like I have the body of like a 47 year old dad now. Uh, I think eight years in the army when you come home you just really want to start to drink and eat fast food again and i think i overdid it a lot uh, so if i had my like army body i could still do the dance because <laughs> now if i do it i just look look like i'm doing the chug lug dance my belly moves and stuff so i try to refrain from any dancing at all uh but yeah i think if i really tried again i could i could probably do it i, I used to practice it and uh I used to be able to do it pretty good, but I don't know. It's been a few years. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think I've seen you do parts of it at, at some formals. <laughs> I, yes, I have. <laughs> Not uh, the whole thing, but... No, I don't think I've ever gone through the whole thing. Just bust it out like, a, f a few moves. Yeah, yeah. And it's always towards the end of the night, like at the <laughs> highest peak of drunkenness is when it takes place, so... <laughs> okay, um, so we have a picture of... Your, the picture you have of uh john claude van damme uh yeah. with this amazing frame yeah, uh where did you get this it's a beautiful frame so uh your last week 
uh, episode, Justin. Uh, he's been my best friend basically since I was 10 years old. Uh, he dated my sister. That's how I ended up meeting the kid. But uh, <laughs> I think four or five years ago for my birthday, he dropped it off, and it was all wrapped and everything. And uh, it's this beautiful, like, hand-painted picture of Jean-Claude Van Damme in the movie right after the uh, – <laughs> the crushed up pill hits him in the yeah. eyes and he's like, oh. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's really beautifully done. I got to say, I'm not much of an art guy, but this is like gorgeous top 10, you know, but it's in like this old school Victorian frame. <laughs> and, um, I don't think I've ever laughed so hard in my life from a gift. <laughs> I mean, I, I grown man. I peed myself. I'll, I'll be completely honest. It was so funny. Me, I think Justin and I both had a really good laugh. <laughs> I know. I really want, want, a replica of this now well we'll just take it down to uh one of the stores and get it copied for you or copied. something <laughs> i might be able to find the artist's name on there if i look really hard enough so the wife doesn't <laughs> let me keep it in the house though i gotta go out to the shed just to look at it so. <laughs> I was just saying, is, it, is it in your van too <laughs> no i you know what that's a pretty good idea i should mount that in the van in the van <laughs> i mean i spent enough time in this thing anyway so um and last uh so we know your dad um when are you going to introduce your son Abel to John Claude Van Damme and Bloodsport? Abel's like the second leading uh, expert on Jean Claude Van Damme now, and he can always say like <laughs> "Mama and Dada." But uh, no, he's he's already seen. Um, I think last month we sat down and watched Lionheart, which he didn't really get into that. And then we watched uh, Bloodsport <laughs> two weeks ago, and <laughs> during the Kumite song, he's just kind of like moving his hips a little bit and then right when they started the like fighting montage he really started getting into it and just like dancing and bounce up and down so uh, I, I think he's already uh, a jean claude fan but once he gets a little bit older we'll start watching some more <laughs> nice okay uh that's it for questions so we'll uh hop right into our first segment uh tim and tony review of blood sport This week, we will be talking about Frank Dukes, an American martial artist serving in the military who decides to leave the army to compete in a martial arts tournament in Hong Kong where fights to the death can occur. All right. I almost, I almost said ducks. Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> almost did it right off the bat. Um, all right. Uh, so we're going to go me, Tony, and Mike, uh, starting with our top fives. Uh, my honorable mention is going to be that he must be a huge Giants fan, not like Giants any sport because he just, had just, just a Giant. Just a, I'm New, assuming. a New York Giants and well, he, San yeah, Francisco. San Francisco one so I'm guessing like he also loves Hagrid from Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, when a Giant comes on in Game of Thrones, he loses his shit. Like, I'm, that's just assuming. He's, he's probably got a tattoo of like Jack the Giant. Stuff <laughs> yeah, and like, definitely, for sure. He's got a half sleeve of that or something. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> Um, then my number five is, uh, the splits in the hotel room, which I think we have a picture of Mike doing, <laughs> uh, but I, like that scene's great. Uh, when Jackson walks in and he's like, Oh my God, like freaking out. Like, don't you want to have kids? Like just some great lines. Uh, the number four, I'm a sucker for montages. So the whole training montage is great. Um, and then the, f like the tournament fighting montage is awesome. I was going to say it started with like a, it starts with, like yeah, there's like, like three or four montages yeah. in the movie. Um, number three is the chase scene when he's running away from, uh, Forrest Whitaker, <laughs> 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 which, which I feel like he's just like taunting him the whole time. Just is great. Well, I feel bad for Forrest cause he can't really see all that well. He's only got <laughs> yeah. one full eye. Which and where did he like go? He, yeah, he and he's just like hit around a light pole or something. <laughs> yeah. be good. I mean, it wouldn't take much to get away from Forrest Whitaker. He's like hiding behind the truck and then like taunting them the whole time. Like, <laughs> well, no, he's just standing right next to him. It's just like in his left side. He just can't <laughs> just see nothing. <laughs> when the hell did you get there? <laughs> you get? Uh, then my number two uh, has got to be Jackson. Uh, probably some of the best lines in the movie. Uh, I think I picked one of the quotes. I think I think we each picked we it. all picked at least yeah. one, if not you have multiple. to. Like it, it's yeah, yeah, you have to. You have to. Um, even like his <laughs> everyone else seems like to have like a technique to fighting, and he's just like, or there's that other guy that just like all power, <laughs> like 
throwing people off the, <laughs> the, the uh, oh the asian guy from street fighter yeah. yeah that just throws like the bag on two guys right in the beginning <laughs> <Yeah>. just giggles <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, and then number one is the final fight. I mean, you have to pick that, I feel like. Or you don't have all, to, but it's got to be in the top enjoy, five. Did you enjoy all 20 minutes of that ending fight? Because, like, all the other fights, I realized, were only, like, Oh, they're all, seconds. yeah, it's the last, like, half hour of the movie is the <laughs> final fight. The last fight. half hour is basically just it's, Frank Dukes, like, making them look stupid. And then, <laughs> yeah, so. And then, like, blind, uh, but not, not completely blind. Like, his vision was blurred. Just enough like, to be like, oh, this is inconvenient for me. <laughs> And you just know, like, oh, they're going to cut back to when he was blindfolded for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have hit on almost all of my, like, parts or facts or quotes uh, in your top five In my parts. top five. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, and, like, you don't normally get a final fight that that's lo- that that is that long. Like, usually they're, I don't know, sh- much shorter. Oh, much, much well, shorter. Well, no, in every Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, if you run the tape back, I- I'm guessing every single fight scene at the end of the movie is at least 15 minutes. It like, has. if you really think about, like, Lionheart, I think the final fight scene is literally 34 minutes long, and it's just <laughs> him getting just beat down. Um, so there's actually quite a few movies. It's just like a, a theme that Jean-Claude Van Damme yeah. goes along with, like, how about I just get the crap beat out of me for a half hour, <laughs> and then we'll roll credits. <laughs> we'll roll credits. Yeah, and like even they just hop right into the movie too, which is nice. Like, I think we get fights right off the bat. You were just bat. reading my list. <laughs> yeah, but those are my top five. <laughs> Tony, uh, you don't have to talk. We already got. You. I was gonna yeah, say you got. I, I might as well just leave the mic going and <laughs> just switch between the pictures. <laughs> uh, but my honorable mentions, I'll take one you haven't mentioned. Uh, the score slash the soundtrack. So like the the fight beats in bet- like in the montages and then the, like you were saying earlier the songs that play mm-hmm. um, those are just great they they complement the film. Um, my number two, John Claude Van Damme loves the splits. That's like no secret. <laughs> it's just one of his things. Um, another honorable mention was when he set the record. Like the first first thing we see is him beating the record. Although Which, when did they was, stop the fight, though? <laughs> I don't know, because there's another scene in the montage when he knocks out another guy in, like, four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really mention that. Um, but anyway, um, and then my last honorable mention is that the USA guys stick together. It's like, just the two Americans abroad are like, all right, I'm going to hang out with you now. <laughs> You're now my friend. Yeah, you are my friend now. <laughs> Uh, and then, if, so, if I'm in, I'm sorry, but if I'm huh? in Hong Kong, I'm finding I'm finding any other round eye out there to hang out with. Right? <laughs> round eye. I'm, I'm not. I'm waiting to eat my food till he takes a bite first. Like I'm doing everything. <laughs> like he's just basically going to be my buddy guinea pig for sure. Yeah, and especially if you stick out like Jackson does in, in the entire Hong Kong. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. Then my number five would be the training montage. Uh, we're both suckers for montages, so that's definitely on my list. Uh, my number four is the also the chase through the city. I said it was kind of like a Scooby Doo chase where it's like he's stopping, like looking around. They're running through the streets. They get pushed like off into the docks. I love the song that's playing too. That that whole time. Uh, I'm trying to think of what it is though. It's like so upbeat though. Yeah. The song. Um. Uh, my number three is that the movie gets right into it. Um. It does. Yeah. <laughs> It does, you're right. And it's only it's only a 90-minute movie, but like you get everything you need to understand the story and where everyone's at, and it doesn't do, go too much into it. Uh, my number two are his uh, fighting outfits. I didn't see any luggage that he brought, but he's got like four or five different... <laughs> four or five different get-ups. Which, I mean, they're all cool and they're all functional, but where did he put them? He fought people when he got there for them. <laughs> Those, those are the people that he's beaten. <laughs> yes. If you actually want, there, there, I do have a random fact about that. If you want to bring that up early, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll go right ahead. Right so, so actually, when Frank Dukes helped produce this movie or Ed wrote it, whatever you want to call it, he uh, he hated the outfits that all the actors had. <laughs> and so he actually like went out in Hong Kong himself and bought all with all of his own money, got everybody like new outfits and stuff. And actually, there's really no other actors for a whole lot i mean six or seven of them but the rest all the fighters are actual real fighters so they just wore what they always fight fight with in their you know bouts and stuff anyways so basically just like 
Jean Claude Van Damme's outfit and stuff. Like he basically just went out and bought him new outfits because the original <laughs> ones that the, that the director bought were just total crap, I guess. So I thought that was kind of funny. Mm-hmm. That explains it then. I, I wonder if they put like uh, what is it wardrobe designer or whatever yeah. he, they put his name there now, like <laughs> scr- scratched out, scratched yeah. out whoever's <laughs> name it was. It's just like eight minutes of credits, cr- like just for Frank. Dude. Just for yeah. Frank, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then my number one is that there's not much dialogue and that it showcases the fighting mostly for being like a fighting and combat movie. You actually get to see a lot of it as opposed to movies now where it's like a little bit of it, but it's more, oh, story, dialogue, path. <laughs> this is like, no, let's just get, cut right to the no, fighting. We're fighting the whole time. Well, that makes sense, too, because it was the early 80s, so like violence was okay. It's 2019. You, you can't do that. <laughs> That's no, exactly no. right. It was definitely an 80s movie where you can get away through and you through. Hit, you hit like the... A little bit of humor, a little bit of romance, and a lot of fighting in action. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So uh, I guess I'll jump in now. So I had a couple honorable mentions. Uh, my favorite honorable mention, though, was basically Jackson gets on the uh, the bus in Hong Kong, and he sits behind this like cute Asian girl and like puts his hat on backwards. He's up. All- if you ever noticed too, he's always walking around with a beer. Like everywhere that this guy walks, <laughs> he's got a beer in his hand, which I just thought was amazing. Like this guy's my spirit animal. But um, he basically uh, sits down. He's like, uh, "Hey, babe, want to want to hang out with a real man?" And she doesn't say anything. He's like, "Nah, too big for you, huh?" And she he still doesn't say anything. He takes a big sip of a beer there. He's like, "Yeah, I'm too handsome for you, anyways, honey." It's like I just thought that that was. Uh, pretty classic seeing how he's probably one of the ugliest dudes i've ever seen in my life he's so confident in it though yeah exactly which which she was the uh the big fraternity guy from um oh uh, the greek freak movie what was his um, name Shoot. um Oh man, not I Animal know, House, I, but the other one. Um, I, that was going to be my guess was Animal House. No, it's not, no, Animal, not House. Animal House. It's it's the other one. Um, Tim's looking it up now. The Geeks. I can't think of the name of it off the top. Oh, of my head. Um, Revenge, Revenge of the, of the Nerds? Nerds. Thank you, Revenge of the Nerds. I yeah, he's, yeah. He's uh, basically like the big football name, player Jack from Revenge of the Nerds, and it's just like the ugliest oh, human being he's, he's probably guy, ever seen. He's the guy that screams Nerds, right? Yeah, Nerds. Okay, yeah, that, exactly. that's why he looked familiar because like that little cross eye. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Nerds. Like somebody actually did beat the crap out of him. Like him and Forrest Whitaker have eye things in common. He just, like one stands on the left and one stands on the right, and they're basically one whole human being at that point. So, um, but my second honorable mention was the basically the the montage. Everybody loves a montage. It just uh, not so much that like it covers all the different fighters. But the crap that they're doing has no no way would that be a real training for a fight. Like like the Korean dudes breaking ice. Like the the little African dudes like punching coconuts, coconuts. and stuff. Like it just it, it made me laugh more than anything and I think that's the great part about the movie is like it's supposed to be cool and like in Jean Claude Van Damme's head it's super cool, but to the rest of the world it's it's actually kinda comical. So I, I actually like that part a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you mean that yeah that that big guy throwing the bag on two of them? I'm pretty yeah, sure that was like I said. You know uh, <laughs> the guy from Street Fighter just throwing bags at little Asian dudes and uh, just stuff like that. It just it's just really funny. But um, so my number five was um, at the very end of the movie. Basically, mm-hmm. Jackson obviously spoiler alert, but Jackson gets hurt in a fight and uh, loses a piece of clothing, which is a Harley Davidson bandana. Which uh, I own several of, by the way. <laughs> but um, and it, at any at any rate, he gives back the uh, the piece of uh, bandana back to him, and he just kind of looks at him dead in the eyes, like man hug style. It's like anytime, any place, anywhere, if you need me, I'll be there. I love you, brother. And like <laughs> Jean Claude's really holding back tears, like I love you. <laughs> I love you too. So um, I think. Basically, any time uh, Bear and I embrace each other, that's basically what we do anyways. <laughs> it's just, it's been going on since we were like five, and we just can't stop. Our wives think we're stupid as hell, but we just keep doing it anyway. So, um, But I, I, that was one of my favorite parts. Um, the other one, which I noticed nobody picked, which I was surprised, was the quarter uh, trick at the I bar. Left, I left it off because I saw it on yours. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, that's... Yeah, so he just uh you know basically does his little like goldfish trick or whatever you want to call it he's so speedy fast that he 
switches out a quarter and gets to keep the girl. I thought that was a great rate for a semi decent looking blonde girl was a quarter. Um, I thought that was pretty <laughs> ingenious. Good rate. Um, yeah, I mean if I was if I was that girl I'd be pissed because I'd feel like a whore. <laughs> but um apparently she was okay with it and she got what she wanted. She so, feigned um, being pissed for a yeah. little bit and then like yeah, well, she, one of your points at, later. Uh, she's very yeah, offended. She was pissed at the, she was pissed at the uh, Iraqi guy, but she wasn't pissed at Jean Claude, which I found kind of even more degrading that he would just put a you know a, a quarter on the line for her. but hey i mean it's the 80s it's, like it's I said. the women, 80s women, there you go. <laughs> yeah. he's just looking for a loose woman so i get it i mean it's fine <laughs> um my next one number three was the video game scene um probably one of my favorite jean claude van damme moments because it's so subtle but it's it actually hits you as being really funny where he's basically uh playing a video game and jackson looks at him he's like aren't you a little young for full contact? And Jean-Claude's like, aren't you a little old for video games? <laughs> I don't know why. It just seems like something like an old man would say to just a young buck or things I say to people <laughs> much younger than me now. Um, like I said, he's my spirit animal, so what are you going to do? But, um, yeah, that one just had me cracking up. Even when I was, like, 10 years old watching that movie, like, I remember specifically laughing out loud. Um at that part, knowing full well that I was much, much wiser in my years at that point. So, <laughs> um, and then, obviously, uh, Frank doing the splits, um, which we've all kind of hinted to. But just the way, not so much him doing the splits in his meditation, which why do you have to meditate doing the splits? I don't think, like, Bruce Lee or anybody else did that crap. It's just Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> it's something to do with the splits, like you hinted to, Tim. But... Um, just the fact it was Jackson's reaction to him doing the splits, like, oh, dear God, what are you doing? Because <laughs> um, I think even Jackson at that point is like, dude, I don't meditate, but I definitely wouldn't do the splits if I had to meditate, <laughs> yeah. bro. Like, so I just thought that was that was really funny, too. And then um, the last, my favorite scene, obviously, is the pill throw in the eyes. I don't think – you could throw, like, any pill in the world in my eyes. I don't think I would go <laughs> completely blind and yell and scream like, <laughs> like Frank Dukes did. Um, and he was like it, basically completely blind through the last 10 minutes of the fight. Yeah. Like trying to, and at the same time, being blind, trying to like save a referee, like the referee was in danger. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he's doing. I think that's but, how they um, needed him to just punch the referee out real quick. It would have been well, hysterical. Yeah, he, like, he went into like mama bird mode. Like, I don't know what he was doing, but um, I thought that was pretty funny. So that was, that was my number one. <laughs> the pill in the eyes. <laughs> Yeah, they never like they just kind of show you the pill, and you're like, I, I have like I think the first time I watched it, it was like I don't even know what that is, and then you realize it is a pill that he I, was like. Gonna... It looked like a lifesaver to me <laughs> when he put it in his shorts. Yeah, <laughs> it's what it, it's, I, honestly that was my first thought. I'm like, what the hell? Is, what, is, what is he doing what, with that? What do he need a Jolly Rancher for? Yeah. I don't get it. Well, I feel like they wrote the script and the, like at one point there was sand on the. Uh, there's sand all around the I was going to say, like, that had to be like, oh, he's going to pick the sand up and throw it, and someone's like, oh, no, they're not going to do it that way. Like, <laughs> too many movies have done that already. Yeah, I mean, what's the pill for anyways? Is it some sort of, like, weird steroid when if you put it next to your belly button, it makes you ten times stronger? Like, you become an, X, you become an X-Men or something? Like, I don't get it. Like, That's I never def- understood that part. Or did he, like, purposely want to crush it up and throw it in somebody's eye? Yeah. I guess... He is a Korean bastard, so, you know, I guess it could, you know, go that way, too, but I never understood it. Yeah. Um, okay, a uh, few problems with the movie. Um, my, my number one is that Janice falling in love with him after, like, a day, like, madly in love. <laughs> I mean, he is a no, gorgeous man. No, you're gonna but... kill yourself. It's like, I just met you. <laughs> just cares? met you. I'm like, not even that. That's the problem. Is like, I think it's Jackson and Frank is a bigger love story than anything. <laughs> a like, better love story too. <laughs> they have a much more intimate scene, I think, than than anything. But yeah, that, that's the only thing. But I feel like every '80s movie did need romance, like you said. So they just threw it in there. Yeah. Uh, my one of my problems, and that's another air quote problem. Yeah. But um, I think it's disappointing. There's no line when he gets blinded by the pill. Like someone doesn't just shout, "Remember your training." <laughs> <laughs> Remember your training. Sweep the leg. Yeah. <laughs> Sweep. Uh, my other problem is the young Frank voice. How it's just it's like so, too. It's too high. It's too high pitched. Yeah, yeah. It's aggressively high. <laughs> 
Um, and then my third is what kind of tasers were those? There's <laughs> like a big ass square it's like kettle <laughs> prods, right, yeah, pretty much. Way too yeah. big for the projection stun guns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, those were my problems, though. <laughs> what kind so, of my problems, um, I had a couple different problems. Um, one, they basically hint throughout the whole movie that the Kumite is like this unsanctioned event, like nobody's supposed to know about it. And, um, I think this is actually a really valid point. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's supposed to be like completely underground, but actually, in real life, the Kumite is a, a real thing. Now, they don't really hint if it's really named the Kumite, but from some fighter, other documentaries and things like that, they do call it the Kumite still. Um, but I guess it's completely authorized. They do hold one every five to 10 years. I think it is, which they do hint to in the movie, but I just thought it was kind of funny how they're making it seem, you know, underground, but it's really like one of the bigger, <laughs> you know, fight events in the world yeah so. didn't didn't they even say like someone was sponsoring it too like one of the, like the they, world fighting or something they do say the iffa or whatever it's yeah. called is is a <laughs> sponsor which i don't understand how you can have a sponsor for, for an unfair yeah, yeah I, I i don't get it either but hey i didn't write the movie so <laughs> we're just gonna stick with it um and then a couple of the scenes with every jean-claude van damme movie you could like clearly see that kicks and punches are not landing yeah. So I think everybody's just like really adverse in the one inch punch or something like that. Like, <laughs> like, like, like people are getting knocked out from like five feet away. Um, and you can actually like slow down a couple of frames and you'll, you can see it in like different bloopers and things like that. The kicks aren't landing. So I thought that was funny. And then like my, my biggest problem was just like I said earlier, like the whole pill, you know, landing in your eyes and completely blinding you for like 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> I just thought that was so funny. Like, I never... Like, I think you could splash chlorine in your eyes, and it will not, <laughs> it like, completely, completely blind. blind you for 10 minutes. So I, I just thought that was great. <laughs> Uh, and to your second one, the kick's not landing. I feel like like every '80s movie has at least one punch or kick that doesn't land, but the guys still go flying. Uh, oh, Do you ever yeah. see the uh, fake thirty for thirty for Rocky Four? Yeah, <laughs> when they're talking about, it, he's like, some of these punches weren't even hitting, but these guys are flying like like the wind was knocking them over or something. <laughs> they're swinging so hard, the wind knocked them. Over. <laughs> but that's what I think of every time I see one of, like that happen in a movie. Also, I also did see a couple that were like, okay, they did land it, but mm. it's clearly like controlled. They know what they're doing. All right, now that we're done with problems, we'll move on to a few quotes. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go with my third one. I think I'm gonna end on a, the Jackson one. Um, so the official, it's right when Frank and Jackson walk in and. Uh, he breaks the. He does the. What is it? The. Death uh, punch. Yeah. What is it? Death. Uh, though. What. What is death it? Punch. Death punch. Yeah. He, yeah. And he picks the. Lynn picks the. Or Victor picks the top the one. Top He's one. like, no, bottom one. <laughs> right before. And he breaks it. <laughs> the official's like, we honor your invitation. <laughs> Jackson turns around, no shit, you honor his invitation. <laughs> <laughs> and then like it pauses for a little bit and uh, Chung Lee's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it goes very good, but brick not hit back. I think that's like one of his two lines too, which yeah, I think he says something. That and like, you're next. Yeah, and <laughs> that's pretty much it's pretty much all he has in mm-hmm. the movie. Uh, but I, I love that one. Only lines in like eight different movies. Uh, yeah, because I think he, I don't think he talks at all in what's the other one? Uh, Double Impact. Yeah, I was gonna say just look at all I, of Jean Van Damme's movies. Yeah. <laughs> Ten or fifteen of them because they're good buddies. So. <laughs> uh, my next one is, let's see. Oh, Frank and uh, Jackson, and he's just about to fight him. He's like, "Hey, you listen to me. Go for the stomach and stay away from his right leg." <laughs> Jackson just looks. At him, Will you stop worrying, Frankie? I've got it under control. You sound like my mother. <laughs> Man alive. <laughs> just him yet bitching about it. <laughs> Which he doesn't look like a guy that would be like, oh, man, alive. Like, yeah. I think I would have more stern words if a friend <laughs> I, Yeah. Like, oh, with the or just be like, okay, yeah, that this guy knows okay, what he's that's doing. That's a great idea. <laughs> I just saw him doing the splits in his hotel room. Like, uh, then my last one is one of my my favorites. Yeah. Uh, Jackson and uh, 
Rollins or Forrest Whitaker. Who the hell are these scumbags? And Rollins goes, hey, stay out of this, pal. He's like, ain't your pal, dick face. <laughs> just, just like a great comeback. Oh. Okay, so uh, my three quotes, um, I'll just go in order. Um, it was, it's right when they get, like right, right before the invitations. Or actually when they right get to Hong Kong. Get right to Hong mm-hmm. Kong. That yeah. makes more sense. Um, he, for Jackson goes, who the hell is Mr. Lin? He goes, I'm Lin. You Jackson? You look like a Jackson. And that would make you Frank du- Frank Ducks. <laughs> no, and he goes, no, no, it's Dukes. Oh, gotcha. Like, put up your Dukes, right? <laughs> put up your Dukes, right? Yeah, put, put up your Dukes, right? Uh, my second one is um, they're watching, Jackson and Frank are watching the first fight. And Jackson goes, it's why they call this thing Bloodsport, kid. <laughs> oh, he said the title. <laughs> That's exactly why I have it in my quote. <laughs> and two, it's a nice little <laughs> moment between them. Like right after the guy gets kicked in the face and loses like two teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like after yeah, after the first fight. Uh, and then my third one's in the hospital, towards the end. Um, it's uh, the doctor actually says, "If you want to go, if you want to argue, go somewhere else, please." And then John Claude's just like, "Sorry," and like hurries out the door <laughs> to go argue some more. <laughs> That's just one of those like kind of comedic '80s elements, I think, where it's like they're commenting on it's like, "Just go outside, just do this, do this outside. This is a hospital." Which in Jean Claude's mind, he probably thought it was like the best soap opera he's ever. Oh, uh, absolutely, yeah. Like he should have won an Oscar or something. Yes. <laughs> More comical than anything, yeah. So uh, I had three also. The first one was right after, right when Jackson's in the hospital after Frank <laughs> went. Uh, he basically gives him back the bandana. And he's like, next time, try to keep your clothes on. And I, I remember Randy, uh, like I said, Bear from earlier, would like come into my bedroom holding a pair of socks. He's like, Next time, <laughs> throw them at me, and like, we'd go snowboarding. He'd like, I'd be like, "Hey, where's my hat?" He's like, "Next time, <laughs> uh, it's been like a, another running joke for I don't know, twenty-seven years or something like that." Um, the other one, is, like I said earlier, from the from the video game scene, aren't you a little young for full contact? Aren't you a little old for video games? It's just pretty much like the perfect comeback to you know what the scene was and what was going on so and then my favorite one which i was surprised yeah. <laughs> noticed, because you can't even really tell what the guy says but like right when uh chin or whatever is taking them down to the kumite like they walk through this like shady alleyway and there's like three old guys standing there like what the hell are three old guys gonna do anyways but the one guy's like we're here for the kumite like this u.s the guys from america and, like, the old man looks him up and down. He's like, okay, USA. <laughs> it cracks me up. We still say, okay, USA to each other all the time. We, even say, we said it in high school all the time. Uh, it's just, like, the best. I thought the best one, Joe. Okay, USA. <laughs> oh, that, that is a good one. And I'm sure that guy had no idea or doesn't speak English, so they had to <laughs> definitely coach Tell him. him. Like, this is what this is what I want you to say. Just after watching him say it, like, like he knew the Kumite was coming up, so he's like, "Okay, you would say." Okay, let's move on to some trivia about the movie, starting with "Who Am I." Okay, so uh, we're going to pick an actor or actress from the movie 
and read off their top four IMDb movies and see there are, if there are two women in this film. So, <laughs> so <laughs> if you choose one of them, um, Dinah, I, I got it. <laughs> I got it. Uh, all right, so I'll go first with mine. Uh, the person was in Bloodsport, <laughs> U.S. Marshals, uh, Hancock, and Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> Jackson? Yes, yeah, that is correct. Be... <laughs> I know. So... The last one kind of. I guess I gave it away earlier. That's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a problem. Uh, but I got three random facts. Um, he currently resides in Chicago. Uh, oh, shit. Yeah, he. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> uh, he went into the brewing uh, brewing business, and he is co-owner of Trader Todd's, which is in I think Lincoln Park or Wrigleyville. Is that just like a crappier version of Trader Joe's? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a bar, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd be funnier, though. I guess he, he's... Uh, <laughs> From Dollar General. <laughs> five cents cheaper. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's actually, I think he's on one of their beers. Uh, his character from Revenge of the Nerds is on one of the beers that they brew. That would make sense. Um, and then he attended and graduated Notre Dame High School. In Sherman Oaks, California. The other one? <laughs> yeah. Which Damn, is funny because me and Tony both went to Notre Dame High School in Illinois. Oh, that would have been cool. <laughs> I think we would have known, though. Oh, we absolutely... <laughs> somewhat, somehow we would have figured that out. Okay, my who am I? Um, I am known for Bloodsport, Double Impact, Enter the Dragon... And by my high key. <laughs> is it Tanaka? N- no. Uh, or is it Chung Lee? Chung yes. Lee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bolo Young. Bolo Young. I believe that's how you say his last name. Which is just a great name. <laughs> um, let's see. Some random facts about him. Um, his best deadlift exceeded seven hundred pounds. <laughs> And he was a martial art in, martial arts student of Bruce Lee. Oh wow! Um, Is that old? Yeah, he was born in forty six. Oh good! God. He's got to be dead by now. <laughs> uh, not yet, apparently. At least we'll, we'll hold we'll hold a memorial at my house. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then lastly, uh, I gotta find a good one. You know what, Dad? I'm gonna I'm gonna end it with that. Those are my fast facts about him. Very good, very strong. So, um, I have one. It's uh, he was in. Well, I already gave part of it away. Jeez. Uh, Black Panther, <laughs> Phenomenon, Battlefield Earth, and Star Wars Rogue One. Is it Forrest That's Whitaker? That's gonna be Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. <laughs> That's Forrest Whitaker. Um, so I do have a couple. Right? which we've already alluded to one with his eye he's <laughs> born with a, called, a condition called ptosis um, which is like some sort of hereditary condition um, that doesn't let his eye open all the way so I guess he can see okay he just can't <laughs> open all the way so, um, it's just a little bit tougher yeah exactly <laughs> which the other one I another random fact was he's, he was actually um, hired to direct Fat Albert a few years ago when they redid it or whatever oh wow but I guess he dropped out. He got into a big argument with Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're gonna side with somebody, I'd, I'd probably take Forrest Whitaker. You're right. yeah. Over, Over Phil. Phil. <laughs> but hey. Um, and then the last one was actually a lot of people don't know, but Forrest Whitaker is actually a pretty accomplished black belt. Um, he's a pretty good martial artist, from all accounts of all the research I've done. Um, I guess he got his black belt like fairly early in life too. So oh, wow. He practiced in martial arts for a long time, I guess. Interesting. Yeah, you're right. No, that's not yeah. something that I knew. Yeah. Um, okay, so now we're going to do some uh, random facts about the movie. Um, I, I got two here. Um, even after it was filmed, the movie was almost never released, but uh, Jean Claude Van Damme uh, helped edit the film so that it could be. Um, I guess whoever the uh, production company was, like, after he was starting to hit it big, was like, oh, maybe we should release this movie. <laughs> Got Warner Bros. written all over it. Yeah. 
Uh, and then my second one is that the flash. I don't know if the, how true this is, or at least like the second part of it. But the flashback runs at ten minutes and fifty six seconds, which they say is the world's longest flashback event in a film. So I, I, mean, I mean, it makes sense. It's the first <laughs> quarter of the movie, almost. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I thought. It, I mean, that even if that's not true anymore, it's still pretty long for a flashback, I guess. So I thought that was funny. Which even the flashback had like some great one-liners in it too. Did like, you really think about like, why don't you quit, Round Eye? Like, <laughs> like a whole bunch of little one-liners were still in that mm-hmm. show or in the beginning of that montage too. So like, it that just tells you how long the damn montage was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my two facts about the movie: uh, the fighter Hussein, uh, played by Mariano, I guess, uh, was actually knocked unconscious by Van Damme with an elbow in the face, and that scene is the one that's in the movie. I feel like any time someone gets hit, they do use it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like, okay, oh that, that was good. Look good. good job. <laughs> If anything, it's just to sh- throw shade at the guy who got knocked out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, you know what? We're going to use it because of that. Uh, and then my second fact, which I think, Tim, you alluded to earlier, uh, Ray Jackson does not use any recognized martial <laughs> arts at any point in the film. <laughs> the only one. <laughs> he just billy clubs people. Yeah. <laughs> Duh! And then taunts them afterwards. Like, yeah, did you see that? <laughs> Jackson! Jackson! <laughs> So I actually had a couple of them. You can just tell me to shut up after a while. But, I mean, the one was actually uh, at the ending credits, which I didn't realize until I had to rewatch it. So I'll just skip that one. But it's still pretty impressive. Like, real Frank Dukes was 329-0 and 0 in his Kumite fights, which, I, like I said, I think they have one every four or five years. So that's pretty impressive for you to be able to go, like, 329 and oh i thought that was pretty crazy yeah depending how big those brackets are too like i mean even if they are big it, it, that's still like that's like 60 guys 60 yeah. guys a, uh, a tournament that's crazy yeah from, what, yeah from what uh the research i did was like in the movie they only had like what 18 fighters but yeah, Ryo, yeah probably something Ryo kumite's had like yeah 60 or 65 guys or something like that or something crazy so i yeah. mean i guess theoretically you could fight 25 times or something like that but still i mean that's yeah, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, and then um, the Kumite does move around, from what the research I found. But the one where Frank Dukes like broke all the records and things like that was actually held in the Bahamas, not in Hong Kong. But since Bahamas don't really have like a big like fight scene and things like that, they figured they would take it to Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah. and make more sense with the movie and everything. Yeah, uh, which. Something I've known pretty much forever was that Jean Claude's real name is not just Jean Claude Van Damme; it's actually Jean Claude Camille Francois Van Vandenberg, which I I, I can't really say it's the right. Word. I knew the Camille part, but the rest of it definitely not. Yeah, Camille Francois Van Varenberg. There we go, Varenberg. Varenberg. Um, but I guess it didn't sound cool enough, so we changed <laughs> it early on in his career. So. Van Damme. And damn, yeah, so that works. I mean, good move. <laughs> yeah. And then I think somebody already alluded to it earlier, too. But, um, or I said something earlier about there's no stuntmen being used. They're like, yeah, everybody's no stuntmen. Like, everybody did their own scenes, which that leads to guys getting knocked out on action. <laughs> yeah. but, um, so I thought that was cool. But the one thing that, like, really hit me was that was kind of cool was, this was actually cool. Bloodsport played a huge role in how, um, uh, Mortal Kombat was developed as a video game. I guess the creators were working on a game similar to Bloodsport. They were trying to build the game off of the movie, but obviously the movie wasn't like a huge box office hit, and it didn't really become like a cult favorite till many, many years later. So they basically were scrapping the idea, but the they didn't want to completely scrap it. So what they did was kind of change characters and things like that. And that, uh, Johnny Cage was actually based off of Jean Claude yeah. Van Damme. Yeah, I was gonna say that. That's what I read too about because I didn't know this either. And then yeah. when, when was I the this? first Mortal Kombat? Ninety-two. 90... Okay, that's what yeah. I yeah. thought. It was like only a couple years after this released. Yeah, which I thought that was pretty cool because like Mortal Kombat was another like that... huge part of my childhood growing up too. Yeah, that's like the that's... fighting game yeah. that everyone knows yeah, about. Exactly. They're, they're I mean, still, they're still coming yeah. out. <laughs> so, like, I thought that was pretty cool that after all these years, you know, that's still going. And then, um, speaking of video games, um, the arcade game that Frank and Jackson are playing in the lobby is actually a real game called Karate Champ, what they made many years later. 
and you can actually get it on your iPhone now. You can download it. Oh, whatever. really? That's yeah, cool. I, I downloaded it the other day, and it doesn't work all that great, but it's a real game. <laughs> I might have to download that now. Um, okay, any uh, final thoughts? Uh, anything we missed? Um, I don't know if no, there was there any deleted scenes in this movie. I forgot to look that up. No, there um, there was no deleted scenes. Really, all they had was just like a bunch of pictures from cast and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. obviously, like social media wasn't big back yeah, then. There was but... no social media, so it was just like a bunch of polaroids of the actors and things like that. But that's all there was. There was never even uh, like bloopers introduced or anything. Yeah, and yeah, they didn't really I feel do like, bloopers. Yeah, I feel like if everyone was a fighter on it too. It's like, well, you're not really going to have bloopers. They're going to yeah. know what they're doing. So you I don't think have the to only, be like... I'm guessing they probably cut out some fights. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they film like, yeah. hey, spar with this guy for 10 minutes and we'll see what we can get or something like that. Um, I did forget to... I do love the scene uh, when he beats the first guy for the record. <laughs> and that gold tooth is sitting on the, the uh, mat. I I just love guy that. Just... That guy's face just like he looks around and he grabs it. <laughs> like, and then he bites it. He bites it to make sure it's real. <laughs> <laughs> just a great scene uh should have been in my top five um no I, yeah but i think everything we hit everything i this is one of those i i said it last week and i think I, i'll say it again i get this and kickboxer mixed up like in in my head they're just one big movie <laughs> and he goes to the different fight scenes and does them <laughs> or the different places and yeah. fights them um but yeah now i now i have them straight for sure well, I think like with Jean Claude Van Damme, his last movie inspires his next movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> he keeps rotating, keeps going. <laughs> He's just playing like the same character halfway through. And he I just, just changes. He just changes his name in the movies. And all the <laughs> yeah, shows. that's what Kickboxer is. That I think was is based on a real guy too, or something. And or that now that they're continuing the movie, it's like it continued the story of him and his brother. But like distant cousins and yeah, because they just like came out with a new kickboxer, didn't they? I think so. Well, there's actually three other kickboxers, and then they just came out. Yeah, with just okay. a newer one where Batista's in it. Oh, is he? And, and isn't the mountain from Game of Thrones in it? Or maybe I was watching I could, something else. I'm, no, I'm, no, the mountain's not. It's just uh, Batista. Oh, okay, I'm trying to think. So of, cool. I saw the, the mountain in one of them. Yeah, after Kickboxer one, there was two other movies that were made like earlier in the 90s and those mm-hmm. were with a different guy that is yeah, they, another really accomplished martial artist but yeah because I, I don't know when I looked it up but I think actually I was what the, it was on TV and I watched it and I started looking stuff up <laughs> about it and it was like oh yeah they did three more two or two more or three more or whatever yeah but uh when we did when you picked this one I started watching all of his movies and then it was like now I kind of want to watch some kung fu movies, like so. I just <laughs> went into like just binged a bunch of those. I was like, so that, "That is a good way to spend your time." I yeah, mean, just watching just, a bunch of fights. Out, yeah, you just want to go out in the garage and like take water and <laughs> stuff for like a solid step week. Wanna go, yeah, want to go do yeah. karate in the garage. <laughs> Which I have a son now, so I can't do that. So I'm like trying to teach him how to kick bananas and stuff. So he won't hurt himself. <laughs> And I'm like, watch how it's done, boy. And I'm like, I'm kicking bananas and falling over because I'm getting fat and old. Now, so. You're saying you can't do the splits? <laughs> no, I cannot do the splits. No, my, my wife always jokes and says I'm extremely flexible for how big I am now. <laughs> like, because in my head, I'm still skinny. So, like, I still got, like, in my head, I'm still, like, the skinny army dude. So, like, that's not a big deal. But I do try to, like, take it too far quite a bit. <laughs> and I like, hurt myself, but the splits were never in my wheelhouse. No. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. We have a picture of you doing them. Very so. true. Yes. <laughs> so okay, wh- I should say that I haven't done the splits in many years. <laughs> in now, many years. <laughs> it's been many moons. You and your shades doing the splits. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, now we're gonna pretend like we're in charge and recast the movie uh, how we'd like. Um, so I'll go first, um, and I recast mine. I. Just before we we begin, I do love yours, Mike. I really wish I would have done it the God, same that, way. That's a yeah, that was a great <laughs> that's a great idea. I'm yeah, from we'll now get to that, on. We'll get to that later. In future in future episodes, I'm going to steal your idea, like <laughs> and do it in all different versions. Uh, but I did mine like a modern day. Uh, so for Frank, I did a Tanner Buchanan, who I don't know if you've seen Cobra Kai, uh, but he's uh, Johnny Lawrence's son. So like he's got some karate skills already. So. I, feel like that would work 
Uh, Jackson, I went with either uh, The Hound or Terry Crews. And I could see just Terry Crews doing like the peck bounces, oh, like yeah. <laughs> like intimidating guys. So I, I I would go with him first. Just cave man, cave, uh, cave man punches punch people, people. And, like, yeah, hitting them with his pecs, <laughs> and then doing like the whistle dance from White Chicks afterwards. <laughs> he just screams. Ah! <laughs> uh, then for to cut uh, to uh, Takana Tanaka. Tanaka, I can't speak Tanaka. Tanaka. Uh, Donnie Yen uh, from Rogue One, actually, um, would be a good trainer, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Chong Lee, I went with Tony Ja, um, just for martial artist skills. Uh, he was good in Triple X, the new one, and I think he was in one of the Fast I th- and I think Furious. He's, been in, uh, he's like a big martial artist yeah. guy, I'm pretty sure. Um, but he was in one of the Fast and Furious, and uh, that would be a good fight at the end with him in it. Uh, Helmer, I went with Donald uh, Lugo. Uh, Donald Log. Yeah, log. Uh, Bullock. Yeah, okay. Gotham. He's a good cop. Uh, he yep. plays good <laughs> cops and criminals. Um, then Rollins uh, for Forrest Whitaker's role. I went with Denzel, Denzel Whitaker, Whitaker, which um, isn't his son. I looked this up because I wanted to make sure. But he plays Forrest Whitaker in Black Panther. They look, like, very oh, similar. That, oh, that guy. Okay. Like, he, they could definitely be father and son, but they're not. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, Janice, I went with uh, the love interest for Cobra Kai is Mary Mauser, so they've worked together already. And then Victor, I went with Ryan Potter, who is Beast Boy. Yep. He could be the tour. Oh, tour. okay. Oh, that, I, that's a good one. Yeah. All right. Uh, for my recasting, for Frank, I went with uh, Ludi Lin, so uh, the Black Power Ranger. Uh, okay. And he was in Aquaman, but you really can't tell. Yeah, you can't he, see he him. He was in like that. one of the army guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Jackson, I went with the Big Show. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> is is he just wearing the Big Show? <laughs> the Big singlet? Show. He, he has to. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, for Tanaka, I went with Jet Li. Um, so like a revered martial arts Artist. guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Chong Li, I went with Ling. Liang Yang, um, the guy from the Mission Impossible bathroom scene. Oh, okay. He's he's been mostly just a martial arts stunt guy, and that was his first like acting, like his face. That's just yeah. we're just gonna use him, <laughs> so we'll, I'll throw him in there. Um, and then for Janice, I went with Brittany Snow. Yeah, the other chick from who. Pitch Perfect. Yeah, the redhead. Yes. Or she was red at yeah. one point. Yeah, mm-hmm. shot. Yes. <laughs> So she could play that like kind of <laughs> ditzy reporter and fall in love yeah, in like one, fall in love in one night and one <laughs> one afternoon one one, one, af- one night in Bangkok almost <laughs> <laughs> one night in Bangkok. Um, so I actually wanted to do something different that I haven't heard on your podcast yet. Um, I thought Fair. this movie would be perfect if it was had an all black cast. <laughs> So it's like Bloodsport meets like Black Panther. Thought it would be perfect. Um, Directed so by Tyler for, Perry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a box office hit right off the bat. So. Um, Guaranteed so, money. Yeah, exactly. Like not a lot of money, but at least we're gonna make some money. Like it'll be in theaters for more than a week or two. So they'll greenlight um, a sequel that won't be as good, but you'll still go see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so for uh, Frank Deuce, I went with Michael B. Jordan just because he's like one of my favorite black actors, and he actually does like portray a fighter and things like that pretty well. So yeah, yeah Creed. Um, I did go with that, and then uh, Janice. I just I just thought Rihanna was the one. That's, a, that's, a, that's another good choice. <laughs> like I just uh, yeah, she just had the she she fit the mold for me. So um, and then Jackson, I actually went a different direction and went with uh, Michael Jai White. Mm-hmm. Which is like he's got like he's a badass total, op- yeah. total opposite of Jackson. Jackson has no <laughs> martial arts whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, Ma- Michael Jai White is an actual like I was just saying, yeah, like, he's jujitsu, all kinds of stuff. But I thought it'd be kind of cool. And then um, <laughs> for Tanaka, I wanted Morgan Freeman. <laughs> 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 like like he always plays a mentor and stuff like that. And I just at some point I could just picture him being like, I hope to meet my friend at the border. Like, <laughs> I thought it'd be perfect. That. It's very good, yeah. I know you're right. We haven't done that before, and that was a good. Yeah, so you know, if you want to use that in the future, yes. then, you know, you guys, you guys I think go we'll, ahead. we'll use that in like a rotating, yeah, like different. Yeah, there you go. When we can't think of anything, yeah. <laughs> we'll fall back to 
when the movie's like new. Yes. Or like I'll unca- take a royal. I'll take a royalty on that. Every time you use it, you just send me a check. No big deal. Well, you'll be third in line <laughs> <laughs> after after me and Tim. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. For our last segment, we will be ranking our top five uh, Jean Claude Van Damme movies. Uh. My. I see. This is the one of the first times I haven't hit all five. Yeah. I need to watch it, more of them. Uh, not great. <laughs> uh, but my number one has got to be Time Cop. Uh, I remember, I think we actually drank to this in college a few times. Because yep. whatever, well, I probably, forgot what yeah. channel was on. Just played it oh, all the time. It was always on, yeah. Yeah, so we just watched it every time and drank to it. Um, it's like the Spike, Spike Network. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was on always playing it. Um, actually, so this was in the rotation of the movies I replayed after watching uh, Bloodsport and got real drunk and watched it by myself. <laughs> it was like, still holds up. <laughs> still works. Uh, number two, Bloodsport. Um, number three, Kickboxer. Um, that dance scene's just great. Uh, it yeah. might, it could even pop up to number two, but this one I didn't rewatch, so maybe if I watch it again. Uh, and then number four would be Double Impact. Um, which for him playing two characters isn't too bad, like back then. Yeah, it, it doesn't look awful. Like you definitely tell that it's someone else. Oh on yeah, the, I the mean back of the head, but I didn't. I didn't say it was one of my problems in this movie because like he had to edit it. There was no money, mm-hmm. but like the a lot of the beginning of the movie was just <laughs> off, like slightly off, slightly. Like uh, w- when it was all mostly voiced over, mm-hmm. his young voice was definitely not <laughs> definitely. the kid. So, I mean, there's, there's a little bit of lacking there, but, yeah. you know, what are you going to do for the 80s? What kind of a deal? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to steal it. <laughs> Just slices his hat off. Yeah. <laughs> also, so so does that mean that he won? T- that their that family did? Won? The fa- the if he's style? got If he's got the sword? Yeah, which I think they allude to that earlier in the thing, too, because he said something about, like, you can't... It, he oh, says, you can't you, steal yeah, it. You, you gotta earn it. it, or you have to. You have to earn it, and the only way to earn it is to win the. And that would make s- that so would make sense for when it. they're like, "Show me this move," because only yeah. like he could do it. Or yeah. Whatever. Okay. And that's why his son wanted to be in it. See, we're building the world, <laughs> building the blood sport <laughs> world. Uh, yeah. Those. So those are my four. All right. Uh, my top five is number one, kickboxer. Uh, number two, blood sport. Number three, time cop. Uh, number four, Double Impact, and number five, Expendables Two, which is kind of more almost cameo, cameo, extended cameo, but still works. I, I respect the uh, Expendables Two because I actually thought he played a pretty good bad guy. Oh for yeah, his, he... for as corny as the whole entire premise of <laughs> Expendables is. Oh yeah, that's. Like, let's just get forty old dudes that have been making like action movies forever. I mean... We'll all be good buddies in this movie. Yeah. And Claude Van Damme. That dude's weird as he's shit. He's the, bad, the guy. bad guy. He's the bad guy. <laughs> I mean, he does. Doesn't he kick a knife through? Uh, I think it's the young, the young Eastwood. Yeah, uh, or, Scott or, or something. Yeah. Yeah, Scott. I think, or one of the Hemsworths. I'm not sure. But he like it, kick, it, he like roundhouse kicks it through his chest. All right, now it's, I gotta it's, see it's this movie. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty crazy. It's pretty good. It's, yeah. it's impressive. He could play soccer if he wanted to. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm gonna start with my honorable mention See, to work my way. I was gonna up. I was gonna mention that. Usually uh, we do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which I mean I'm better at the podcast than you guys already, so it's okay. <laughs> if you guys want help, you know, in future weeks, it's okay. But um <laughs> so I went with Death Warrant as number six. I don't know why, but I always remember uh Death Warrant because the bad guy in there he's been he's been a bad guy in other shows too, but I can never remember his name. But he um He's basically like this giant white hillbilly dude, and he's they call him Sandman, which the whole like uh, persona that he puts off is actually pretty cool. It's like a serial killer persona, and the way he like runs the jail and stuff like that, or the prison. It was I thought it was pretty cool. Then he gets like kicked into a furnace at the end of the movie, so I thought that was actually a pretty sweet movie. Uh, but it didn't make my top five. So um, number five was Kickboxer, which we've all had in our list. Just a great movie. Um, Number four, I actually have The Quest. I love The Quest. It's one of my favorite Jean-Claude Van Damme movies, which is basically the same premise, like 
he goes to a foreign <laughs> land and joins a fighting tournament. <laughs> like Dude, the only difference coin. is like he's the narrator of his own story, which I thought was like very Morgan Freeman esque. <laughs> um, so that one had me cracking up pretty good. Plus, he plays like a street clown in the beginning, and he's like fostering like fifteen little like kids that are all homeless and stuff. So I thought that was kind of a good movie. Um, number three, I mentioned it earlier, Lionheart. Uh, Lionheart was the very first Jean Claude Van Damme movie I seen. Um, still, still have that like on standby in my next to my Xbox there. So um, <laughs> Lionheart has a special place in uh, in my heart because I love that movie. Number two, Time Cop. We all had that in our list too, mm-hmm. which is just a superb movie. And then Bloodsport, number one, um, just because, like I've said, it's got so it's got so much more underlying comedy than a lot of other Jean Claude Van Damme movies have, and it's kind of got its own like cult following. Like I feel like Time Cop and you know um, the Quest and Kickboxer, they're like good movies, and some people like them, but I feel like a lot of people have a cult following for blood sport just because of how like funny and corny and <laughs> cool it was to see it when you were growing up so i went with blood sport number one. Oh yeah i mean yeah because my my dad was would like grew up watching these and like when i was younger we, we'd either whenever it was on we'd sit down like that's how i first started watching <laughs> these but, like he would watch them and i'm like oh these this is cool kickboxing <laughs> like there's yeah. blood everywhere like so my dad my dad was the same way but my dad loved actual real boxing like hbo boxing at night and uh anytime anytime i would watch blood sport he'd come in he's like you're watching this karate crap huh? <laughs> like what about some some real fights you ever watch mike tyson i'm like yeah dad I've, I've seen mike tyson then my dad would proceed to like drink a lot of beers and stand in front of the tv and watch boxing and he would like <laughs> put his hands up like he's in the fight and duck and weave like he's in the fight so like it just it's just like another one of those funny childhood memories that comes along with watching Jean Claude Van Damme movies. I, I kind of want you to memorize the Bloodsport ending fight and do the standing and blocking <laughs> in front of the TV now. <laughs> shadow box. Shadow box. Yeah, and then fake being blind for ten minutes. <laughs> oh no, I do that all the time. Anyways. My wife, my wife's like, Dave, can you fold the laundry? I just drop on my knees. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> She's like, damn it, not again. Not again. Yeah, like, You're not blind. She's like, babe, it's your turn to put Abel down. I'm like, oh, oh. It never works, but I still try it. I'm going to keep going until I get one. If one I day. Get her to, if I can get her to just let me do it one time, <laughs> get away with whatever I'm trying to get away with, then I'll just quit doing it. Nice. Uh, well, I will have to watch the other movies you have on your list just yes, to catch definitely. up. definitely. Um, yeah, you got to, especially got to. the quest. I don't know why. Like the quest is just one of those movies you got to watch. It's uh, it's pretty good. Okay, I definitely will. Um, all right, but before we wrap up the episode, uh, we'll tell you a little bit about what's coming up. Um, so next week we're going to be doing the movie Stripes with a buddy from college, high school. Met him in college, but he didn't go to the same college. Oh. Uh, Jeremy Trinchier. Um, um, then we're going to have our Detective Pikachu review is going to drop. Um, we still haven't decided Thursday or Friday. Friday. Probably the Friday. Um, so the day after it premieres because we did get to see it early. So we have that review in the can already. And then um, episode 100 is after that. And uh, we'll keep it under wraps for a little while. Yeah. We're doing something different. Yeah. We'll, we'll say we'll, we're going back to kind of what... We how started. we got to, I was gonna say yeah. kind of how we wanted to how and why we wanted to start yes um, but so that's been our show today hope you enjoyed it you can follow us on social media and our website timmy20talk.com and remember share this with your friends and make sure to join us next week for the mile manor movie review same bat time same bat channel thanks for listening I'm Tim and our <laughs> special guest Oh, Mike. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> And I'm Tony, and we are the Three Ninjas. Good night.